All right, guys, welcome back to another one. We're loading some uh, three inch 15 pellet double watt buck load today. They are awesome. They are heavy recoilers, which I like. I am a fan of recoil. Um, we're using some Kent shells once fired. You could also use your uh, brand new Prime Tauls. This one is a Shadot. The Kent Hall is also a Shadot. Um, before we load one up, we should address the elephant in the room. I'm missing my pirate X. Yeah, I, I shaved. Um, and yes, before anyone says anything, this is normally how I wear my facial hair. Uh, just the handlebar mustache. I've been wearing it that way for four or five years. Last year, uh, I decided I was going to stop shaving for a year. I made it 13 months. That's almost a year. Close enough. But... Here in Kentucky, it's been upwards of 90 degrees almost all the time lately, so I just decided to ditch the beard. Um, there's that clock again. So it'll probably come back. Once every few years, I decide to let the beard grow out for a while, and then I always end up shaving it back off. And uh, that's the explanation behind that. Anyway, that clock's annoying me really bad. <laughs> We're going with a... Shadot Primer. Again, it's a Kent Hall. The original load was one and one eighth ounce of number three shot steel. Shadot. Powder charge we're using is 28 grains of long shot. You could, you could use up to 31. That's the uh, max charge Hodgdon lists on the website for a 1 and 7 8 ounce load, which is what 15 pellets of double watt buck is, uh, 1 and 7 8 ounces. I used to shoot a lot of these back when I first started loading. I started with 16 gauge. That's 31. I want 28, 29. There we go, 29 grains, that'll do. Anyway, I started loading 16 gauge and then got into 12 very shortly after. Uh, this load right here, the 31 grain charge, was a favorite of mine and Josh's. That was around the time we were uh, seeing what we could load up that would really kick hard. And this was one of them. If I can find the picture, I'll show you guys what this load did to my shoulder. Uh, I had a bruise about the size of a softball and uh, some bad swelling going on after just uh, like 10 or 12 of these all back to back. That was pretty rough, but I'm a lot more used to recoil now, as you guys have seen, firing them 3 ounce and 2 and 3 quarter ounce 12 and 10 gauge loads. Um, I honestly do think that these loads right here kick a lot worse out of a uh, five six pound single shot 12 gauge with no recoil pad whatsoever. These hurt worse than the three ounce and two and three quarter ounce loads do. Those have a lot more recoil, but uh, these out of a gun like that, very lightweight 12 gauge is a much more painful recoil if that makes sense. Um, if I didn't mention it, that was the X12X gas seal, fiber cushion wad, uh, where's my knife, there it is, you just need about 3 eighth of this, so 3 eighth of an inch, about like that. that with your press nice 15 pellets of 33 caliber double watt buck and here in a moment I'll show you a, a work around with this right here it's still 15 pellets but inside of a shot cup for extended range loads there's eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 
15 pellets. Um, right here, you could add your buffer if you wanted to, or just skip it all together. Since uh, I like the tightest patterns possible, I'm using buffer. Ballistic Products ITX buffer is what I'm using. Use whatever buffer you like the best, but if you're using the uh, precision reloading buffer, add some mylar wrap to that right there, or it has a really high chance of uh, shredding your hull. I've never used the uh, precision buffer, but everyone else I know that has, it uh, has a tendency to rip their hulls up. do it right there just enough to cover the top row of pellets about halfway and uh, should be ready to crimp back station of the Lilo at all is the six point crimp I need a little bit more than that that's better I'm doing if you guys regularly um, watch my channel uh, you'll know what I'm doing here I'm crimping it and then lifting up turning the hull a little bit and pulling back down several times in a row and that does give you way better crimps than if you were to just pull down once and this hull truly is once fired it's not been fired like eight nine times like my usual once fired holes are very nice crimp on that no bulging of the hole a great great load here what got me into reloading was um i had never really fired a lot of shotgun shells before and one day this was three three and a half years ago now I was at my mom's house and me and my brothers just took some uh, whatever shotgun shells that Walmart and the local sporting goods store had and uh, just bought them up because they were cheap three, three and a half years ago and just had a good range day blowing stuff up, TVs, I think we had a microwave, some trash, milk jugs. It's a pretty good time and that was at the point where I decided uh, I wanted to get into reloading and uh, I had just gotten my first 16 gauge shotgun and decided I wanted to load for it because I noticed 16 gauge shells were a little bit more expensive, two, two to three dollars more expensive than a 12 and 20 gauge shells. And at that time they were just eight, nine dollars a box for your cheap bird loads. Now they're 14, 15 dollars for the same eight dollar box. So I have a lot of 16 gauge components and a lot of 12 gauge components. Anyway, let me show you what to do if you want these in a wad. Now, we're not using double wad here. We're using 31 caliber, which is just a little bit smaller. You're not really losing any energy, any energy not enough to mention anyway. And uh, these are extended, extended range. Got us another once fired Kent hull here. Go ahead and deprime and resize that. Going back with another Shadot primer. That, that's my Winchester's. There we go. Where's the hole? Oh. Another Shadot. Awesome. Another 29 grains of long shot. The Lee 2.2 CC Dipper drops 29 grains of long shot. MG42 wad. I think I mentioned a minute ago that this was another 15 pellet load. No, it's it's 16 pellets. I have this wad guide set up for two and seven eighth inch shells. 
but it also works for 10 and 3 quarter and 3 inch. Make sure your uh, wad is on your powder good, no rattling. 16 pellets of 31 caliber single lot. I'll tell you the lead payload weight. The double lot was 1.82, buffered to 1 and 7 eighth. It's 10, 12, 14, 16. There's your 16 pellets. Again, ITX buffer. It's been a, a minute since I've loaded just regular 12 gauge buckshot loads. Lately it's been a uh, two and three quarter ounce super mags. Again, just enough buffer to cover the top roll of pellets halfway. You could cover them completely, but it doesn't really help. Again, back station of the Lee Load Off, that's the six point. You want the point in the crimp facing you. Beautiful. Very nice. Looks almost like a factory crimp right there. Set it over here to mark it. Now, uh, if you're just getting into loading 12 gauge, there's a chance you may not have any once fired three inch hauls. So in that situation, what you wanna do is grab a brand new primed from Ballistic Products. They have these in stock right now. Today is the 27th of July, 2020 of course. They do have these in stock on uh, ballistic products. And also Precision Reloading, too, has the uh, red ones in stock. And I believe the clear, too. I prefer the clear ones. And uh, another pattern you could use if you don't want to use Long Shot or don't have Long Shot. Maybe you have Blue Dot. Just 34 grains of Blue Dot. Actually, I'm gonna load 32. Cause I like my loads are running a little bit slower. With lead anyway. Lead pattern's better the slower it is, generally. There we go, 32 grains. And yeah, you could also roll crimp these two. You don't have to fold crimp them. And technically speaking, you don't have to roll crimp them either. What you could do is just uh Toss an overshot card or a bingo chip and uh, hot glue it on or super glue. Just whatever works for you. Um, another wad you could use is, let me grab it out of here. Clay Buster CB1138. Now this wad is meant for uh, tapered hauls like the Winchester AA's and Remington STS, gun clubs, stuff like that. Then the new Federal High Overalls, their uh, new line of tapered haul. So, what you want to do to get around that, you guys have seen me do this a million times. Needle nose pliers, pinch the gas seal out enough to where it'll fit tightly in that hole, or a gas seal, or I mean a nitro card, over top your powder. Now this one is a 10 gauge nitro card, and uh, I don't have any 12 gauge ones right now. so. What I'm doing here is, uh, let me show you. If you're new to my channel and you haven't watched or you haven't watched any of my other videos, I do also load 10 gauge and every other gauge, including 24 and 32. So, no, that's, that's the wrong gas seal, my bad. Grab an X12X gas seal from Ballistic Products but guys, if you uh, are loading 12 gauge, you probably don't have the 10 gauge nitro cards. I'm just doing this as it, because that's what I have to do. Uh, you probably have the 12 gauge, so skip this. 
But what I'm doing is taking an X12X, getting it center with the 10 gauge nitro card, and then grabbing a pair of scissors and just trimming it to fit. Um, I left them over there. Let me go grab them one second. Okay, I got the scissors. I'm just trimming this to fit again because I don't have any 12 gauge nitro cards right now. And also, if you don't know, there's not a massive difference between 10 and 12 gauge. Just 46 thousandths of an inch. Putting that right down on top of my powder. And that's what that looks like in there. I'm just doing that to prevent uh, what's called powder migration. It's when you have a poorly fitting or undersized wad for the hole. Uh, the powder can leach up around the wad, which doesn't really affect anything because it'll all eventually get burned as it goes down the barrel as you fire it. But in these clear holes, it's a little bit ugly to look at. So I have a uh, Two ways of fixing it, and that's flaring the gas still out with the pliers or just adding a nacho card, thin nacho card over the powder. Either way works great. You wouldn't know this if you were new to reloading. 12 gauge wads don't fit in all 12 gauge holes. You have what's called straight wall and tapered wads and end holes. Uh, you can get away with using a uh, straight wall wad inside of a uh, tapered hole that might sometimes bulge out the bottom of the hole a little bit but not enough to really hurt anything it still chambers just fine and it still seals just fine the issue is using a tapered wad inside a straight wall hole that was the whole explanation for the workaround right there and you guys that are experienced reloaders, you probably you are rolling your eyes right now at me for talking about this, but it's good just to cover it anyway. Um, let's see here. Come on, roll over ounces. There we go. You can fit single lot bucks stacked by threes in this wad, but what I'm going to use is um, 29 caliber number one buck. They stack really nice by three. Seven, oops, eight, nine. You get nine pellets inside the wad, right like that. Those wads are gonna be extended range, meaning they'll pattern tighter at longer ranges. And then the other pellets go on top of this, they'll give you a wider pattern at uh, extended ranges. It's a combination of extended range and uh, conventional. Conventional means no water shot cup. It's the best of both wor worlds. There was a screw in my buckshot. There's an ounce and a half load right there. You're gonna have slightly higher velocity with this load over the ounce and seven eighth load with the double lot buck and the 16 pellet single lot ITX buffer. The buffer keeps the uh, pellets from deforming so bad. Upon firing, which leads to uh, better patterns at range. You won't notice it so much inside like 20 yards, but beyond, let's say, 35, 40, the buffer will really help keep your patterns tighter. Uh, the pellets come out more round than they would without buffer. And, of course, round objects fly better than square, triangle, rectangle, oval, you know, shaped objects. pretty round. Let 
me uh, tap the screen here. Lighting is a little weird, but that is a pretty looking round. Very, very nice. If you guys want to see a load with the giant quad buck pellets, this is a buckshot size that uh, the factory don't really offer all that much. It's been a while since I've seen a factory quad buck load. You can still get it from, you know, exotic ammo sites like Gum Golly. Um, there's a few others. These pellets, four aught, quad buck. They are 375 or 38 caliber. You don't get a lot of them in the hall, but they carry a lot of energy a really long way. Okay, we have one more three inch primed, brand new Shadot Hall again from Ballistic Products. This is another, I believe, one and seven eighth ounce load, so 28, 29 grains of long shot. Should be 28 right there. Yep. Wad we're using is, you can get it at Ballistic Products or uh, I believe Precision and Graphs also has these. The Gawandi Super Mini. Commonly known as the Little Green Wad. Guys, I call this my zombie round. I've loaded one of these before on the channel in two and three quarter inch, but you can also load it in three and three and a half inch. Now you can't get uh, clear three and a half inch hauls, at least here in America you can't. So it's not technically the zombie round, unfortunately. That's your powder and wad. Already looks really cool. 10 pellets of 375 caliber quad buck. I'll tell you the lead payload weight in just a second. He's stacked by twos. Ten. You seeing why I'm calling it the zombie round? It's got that fleshy, weird pink color, slime green. It just reminds me of zombies. I don't know why, but it really does. For the buffer, guys, for this load right here, you really do want to use a buffer. Ballistic Products, mix number 47. I'm using it just because why not? I have them both. There is also the original buffer. It's in a blue container. The ITX and the mix number 47 have a, uh, you can kind of see it if the lighting would play along. Yeah, there you go. A salt and pepper look to it. The original is just straight white. The ITX has a, uh, shiny little flakes in it. I need a touch more actually. Now that is a very nice looking shell. Let me crimp it. Don't that just look awesome? Those pellets are huge. It's more of a 10 gauge size buckshot, but it does fit in 12. 38 caliber tends to uh, dimple the hauls out just a little bit. And to be honest, you can kind of feel these. Through the plastic, there is a slight, slight dimple, but not enough to cause any feeding issues whatsoever in your guns. That is one of my favorite shotgun rounds right there. And they pattern beautifully out of a full choke. Let's put this buffer up. Well guys, that covers some three inch 12 gauge buckshot. I really just wanted to get on here and load up the uh, 15 pellet double lot buck load. But uh, 
3 inch 12 gauge offers some seriously nice configurations when it comes to buckshot. So just figured why not load up a few more for you guys while I had you here. Please subscribe, like the video, share it with whoever you want to share it with. Um, got any questions, comments, leave it in the comment section down below. We'll get back to you. Um, you got anything you want to see me do as far as, you know, this buckshot stuff goes. I can load birdshot too. I can also do slugs, but not here on YouTube. Um, again, anything you guys want to see, leave me, leave me a suggestion down in the comments, and uh, I'll see what I can make happen. Thanks for watching, guys.